Hi, Tyler Stallman. We're gonna go on a quick tour behind the scenes of an Instagram shoot that we did the other day. Just a few photos we shot real quick for my wife, Anya's Instagram page. Let's see how we did. Now, this is the kind of thing that we shoot a lot and have for years. She was blogging before Instagram was a thing. Back when there was events, we used to go to New York Fashion Week and shoot fashion events and stuff like that. And now we're just looking for cool locations to shoot outfit photos and Anya scouted this great place called Tony's Auto Service. So a friend of mine, Michelle, she actually spray painted this wall. She's a mural artist and super cute, but add to this all these bugs and vans and everything, and it's like the perfect setting for photo shoots. So we contacted Jesse, who's the owner of Tony's Auto Service. So he allowed us to shoot in here, which is amazing. Now, if you've seen the lighting tutorials I do on this channel, they feel a bit more like moody and cinematic, which is something I like for video. But when we're doing this sort of fashion photography, often, it's a very different look. It's a lot more straightforward. Our lighting breakdown for this is really simple because we just want a soft front light, like a beauty light. This isn't cinematic where it's coming from the side or behind. We just want to kind of fill in all the shadows and for Anya to look perfect. That's usually our Instagram look. And to do it, we've got two soft panels. I'm using these because they are bicolor and battery powered. And then we're just blasting it into this big roll of diffusion that is hanging down. This is like the simplest lighting setup you can get. And it's really important that we match the fluorescents that are inside because they add a nice ambiance, but we have to have the same color temperature so they are set to 4,500 degrees Kelvin. It worked out pretty well, it looked great. The goal though was to light her from head to toe. And that is often a challenge of vertical photos. So much harder to get all of the person well lit. I mean, if you just bring in a softbox that's, you know, a few feet across, like, you know, the standard aperture units, they're not big enough to light the full person. You'll see it fall off towards their feet. These are big differences between shooting video and photo. In video, you just, you don't have to worry about that because it's usually horizontal. So the big trick is to have a large soft light source that is similar to the height of the person. So that's why we have this big roll of diffusion goes all the way from head to toe and she is lit up. And actually I've got the start of a new lighting kit just showing up. I've got a whole bunch of nan lights. This is just the small one. But we've got a whole kit of these tubes and some brighter single source lights on the way. It would have been perfect. So I don't know, I think we may end up going back and shooting more. So I'll, I'll update you guys if we do. A few quick tips to keep in mind when you're shooting fashion or clothing photography. The first priority here is the clothes to make them look good. And then it's the model to make them look good. And last of all is your photography. Don't think about it as showing off your technical skills. You are trying to make what is on the other side of your lens look good. So don't get too caught up in your own technique like crazy lighting and weird lens choices that aren't actually helping the photo. This kind of photography is in service to the subject. So you remember, you're not the priority here. So the lens we're using today and most days for Anya's Instagram is the Canon 24 to 70 EF. That's an EF on this RF camera. We're using the Canon R, but this is the lens that we shoot almost everything on and have for years and I haven't really been tempted to switch. It's especially our go-to when it comes to photography. For video, we use primes a little more often, but yeah, this has lasted forever and will continue to. I love this lens. And usually for outfit photos like this, we take hundreds of photos for everyone that's gonna be selected in the end. Like we shoot a lot. So we'll keep doing the same pose over and over for five, 10, 20 minutes, but we don't rush through it and try to get a high volume. Mostly we try to narrow it down to like, okay, what's exactly the right setup and the right pose? And they get two or three variations, but shoot a lot of options of those same variations. So that was the shoot. Now let's head over to the computer and take a look at our post-production workflow. All right, so this is just gonna be a quick version of our editing workflow. Anya has already selected the photos she wants me to use. She always does that on her computer, then sends me the finals. Step one is gonna be adjusting the basic colors and stuff while I'm working here with RAW. You wanna make sure that you do this before you've gotten into Photoshop because there is more color data to work with in RAW than any other file format. And usually for me that involves pulling out some of the detail in the shadows, the highlights, doing some quick uh, lens distortion correction, especially any strong vignetting, and just making sure that the image looks neutral overall. And then I'll go through, copy those settings and paste them to all the photos. So they all look the same. Then I take that neutral corrected photo and I edit it in Photoshop. So we basically did this shoot just for an Instagram post, but you know what? Instagram cannot compete with a real portfolio. And the best place to do that is Squarespace, the sponsor of this video. So if you're building your photo portfolio or you already have one, 
Don't just show it off on someone else's social network. Go build your own custom website with a template that is already ready to go. So in a minimal amount of effort, you can have it looking like your brand. And they have really elegant professional portfolio tools ready to go like galleries where you can just load in your images and they're displayed very high resolution, optimized, resized, all that stuff by Squarespace. So you don't have to worry about the technical side, you just worry about your photography. Or if you wanna include more text in a written story with your photos, they have all the blogging tools that you're gonna to need to lay everything out. Or if you're running a photography business, they have appointment scheduling built right in there so you don't need third-party plugins. Squarespace can handle it all for you. Now, to learn more, it's really easy. You just go to squarespace.com. You can start building a website right now for free. See how it works. In a few minutes, you'll be up and going. And then when you're ready to launch, you're gonna to go to squarespace.com slash Tyler Stallman. And using offer code Tyler Stallman, you're going to get 10% off your first domain or website. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this channel. I'm gonna run my action that I put on all my photos, which basically gives me a bunch of layers to start working with. And on my sample layer, I'm gonna start cloning. And the reason that I always use both a raw processing app like uh, Capture One and Photoshop is Photoshop is the best for this kind of work, like taking out small objects, just kind of cleaning up an image. But Capture One or Lightroom or Luminar, any of these apps are much better at getting all of your photos to match. And that is a key part of it. You can't just edit one photo to look the way that you want. And meanwhile, all the others are garbage. They have to look the same. And Photoshop doesn't make it easy to match photos like that. So I'm just gonna keep cleaning this up for a sec. And also in Photoshop, I'll do anything that's really targeted. So for example, I use this layer that neutralizes some of the pink and yellow tones in the skin to make them more similar. It's pretty subtle on this one. Maybe I'll turn it up a little. And Photoshop is also where I'll end up removing any distracting objects. So let's say I wanted to clean up this ceiling, which I don't think I want to go to that much work, but uh, you know, I don't love this tarp. I would do all that in Photoshop. That's the place for any of this precision stuff. We do remove people from our photos really often. So that's a good example. I and mean, this really does make it look better. Do I want to spend this time on it? All right, I'm not gonna deal with all those lines right now. If you wanna see if I removed the tarp or not, you're gonna have to go look at Anya's post. Uh, so check out her Instagram to see what I decided on. Now let's save and jump back over to Capture One. And then in Capture, we're gonna to go to the PSD so you can see what we cleaned up there. And this is where I add like a film emulations to the PSD because I've already extracted all the data from the original image. Now I'm giving it a look. So you may have seen that I've developed my own Lightroom presets, but now that I'm in Capture One, I haven't gone back and recreated them. So what I'm using is the Beyond Film stuff from Capture One. They created their own set of preset styles that I really like. It's a very natural film emulation. It's a variety of strengths, but none of them feel super fake. And there's also some brand new ones. Capture One just released their Nordic editorial and lifestyle presets which are also pretty nice. They're a little stronger. I haven't really gotten into them yet, so I don't know what I like. I'm gonna to go to the Beyond Film, and I already know that I like this K200 version two. I'm gonna use that. And then I'd usually do any of the cropping ahead of time so that it's a little more precise than on the phone. And that's the basic workflow for client work. I'd export it from here. Um, if you notice the photo looks different on Anya's Instagram, it's because she likes to edit her colors with this app here. It's called Teza and it's got a few presets that she really likes in there. So that's what she's been using lately or VSCO or the stuff that we'll do in Capture. Anyway, that's our post-processing workflow. And I know that was too quick to really learn a lot from it. So go watch the video about my Photoshop action that I apply to every single image that I do. It's really useful and simple. Beginners or advanced, this can be helpful for anybody. So I'd check out that video right now. It will definitely help you with your Photoshop.